I'm Lyle, this is my second year first. I'm Diana, this is my third year first. I'm Miss Meadow, this is also my third year first. And this presentation is going to be about portfolio, engineering notebook, and subjects. Okay, so we're part of Team Zenith, the Group 307, and so our mission is to build a positive, supportive, and collaborative environment for those around us to guide a brighter, better future. So that means we're always constantly helping around our community and trying to encourage more kids to go into STEAM and to like, build more opportunities for them. So um, the key objectives in this presentation are going to be the engineering notebook, the engineering portfolio, and judging. So the engineering notebook is a technical document that is used to record thoughts and ideas. All your information throughout the season is going to be put in this document, and it follows a bunch of rules that um, when you record data in it, you have to make sure that you're following and signing in a certain way to make sure that everything in it is um, properly uh, Excuse me. Um, okay, so in the engineering portfolio, it's a document that shows your progress and results for the judges. So the engineering portfolio should be able to stand on its own when it comes to judges like looking at it because that's going to be the first view they get of your team. So they want to be able to get a good overview of your team in the short amount of time they have to look at it before they meet you in person for judging. And then judging is going to be a five minute presentation of your team talking and 10 minutes of questioning. So before you walk into the group room, they're going to see the engineering portfolio and that's how they get their, your information. But during the five minutes, you want to talk about your team and the most important things you did as much as possible so your judges remember you when they go through all of their judges and their, their wrap. And then the 10 minutes of questioning are gonna be about what you did throughout the whole season. So make sure that everybody knows what they're gonna be talking about and everybody can answer the questions about all of robotics, even though it's examiner. So the engineering notebook keeps track of each member's goals and responsibilities. So throughout meetings, if one member had to go and I don't know, work on the robot or program a certain thing, that would be kept in the engineering notebook. That way everything can be documented and people can look back on it and everything is always in a neat and organized way. It also provides documentation and detailed reference of daily work. So during each meeting, you're gonna, in your engineering notebook, you'll, you're gonna talk about what was said. That way, once again, you can look back on it so that, sorry, I can talk. So that everything is documented and you have information for every single day. It allows for detailed reports and information about problems throughout the season. So you had consistent problems with mechanical or programming, or um, you struggled with a robot breaking or something, it's gonna be in here so you can look back on how you fixed the problems in the past, or if these problems are repeating, how you can fix them in the future, and it also um, provides you know, information about how far you've come and how far you've grown. These are photos of an engineering notebook. As you can see, it follows certain rules. So in the bottom, you have to date it and sign it in a certain way, but all information is going to be sketches and you know, primarily written down. You can paste or put photos in as you see there, but um, primarily it's record thoughts and just information. It's not super formal, but rather just to record you know, stuff throughout the season and um, just information so you can look back on. Okay, so next is the engineering portfolio. So that's gonna present your team's progress and accomplishments throughout the season. So your portfolio is gonna be 15 pages from the cover page to 16 pages overall. And so all the information in the portfolio has to be easy and concise and like quick to understand and read because the judges, like I said, we have such a short time to look at it before they meet you and you want them to understand as much of your team and like your goals, like as, they, as much as they can. Um, and you also, um, I recommend including like sketches and charts. It makes your data like easier to read. It makes your team look more organized. And it overall, just looks better to judges to have your data and charts. Um, you should probably include discussions and team meetings. That's um, part of the first rubric. So if you look online first, how do you rubric for portfolio? What should you include? And what judges are looking for? And one of those things is discussions and team meetings. Um, and you should also include the design process. So when you're building your robot throughout the season and while you're coding, you go through different iterations through your, with your code and like different sensors that you use, you go through different iterations with your mechanical. So when you change your claw design after you um, like test it and you make changes, you want to keep track of all the different iterations you did with your mechanical so you can include it. So some of the main focuses that are going to be in your portfolio is the mechanical, CAD, programming, outreach, and sustainability. When you're putting mechanical in your portfolio, you want to put like the iterations you had for your robot. The judges like to see what you did before and how you learned and applied it to your robot and put it on after. You also want to have like design matrices and something that's unique about your robot and makes you stand out so the judges can also remember you that. Another really important thing is CAD. CAD you can use to 3D model anything you want, which then with those 3D models you can 3D print. Yeah. 
Anyway, so you can use this to 3D print items and customize your robot. This means if you want to specialize your robot for any part of the season, you can 3D print it and make sure your robot's customized and specially designed so that you can perform at your best. Yes? What does CAD mean? Uh, computer Assisted Design. when you're programming to judges in your portfolio when you're like talking about it, it's super important to remember that the judges aren't going to know what you're talking about necessarily if you don't say it in a way that's like easy to understand because those judges aren't necessarily working with programming every day. They're not all like engineers. They're just like volunteers. So you want to make sure that when you're presenting your, you want to make sure when you're presenting your programming, you don't want to put just like, like photos of your actual code because when they look at that, they're not really going to understand it. It'd be better to like maybe write it in a pseudo code or show charts of how your programming works. Like different things like that. And it's also important to talk about how you learn to code if you're newer and like all the like steps and process like all the process that you took throughout your coding journey. So another thing is outreach, which is really important because it's what you've been doing throughout the whole season. So you're gonna write your outreach events, and under those outreach events, you want to write the impact you had on your community with a couple of short sentences and why you did different. Next, like you're gonna have next the major outreaches you did that will really stand out to the judges and write how big of an impact that was to the community so that when the judges are done and they can come by your pit and be like, oh, so you talked about this outreach event. So why was this this way and how important was it and why? Another thing that's like insanely important is sustainability. Sustainability means that you can keep your team running in, fu in the future. This means that um, you're training your members so that everybody understands things so that in turn they can train younger members. That's actually one of the key reasons we keep the engineering notebook. This allows for people in the future to look back on old engineering notebooks and old seasons and be able to study exactly what you did last season, your thought process, pro processes, um, your different robots, your different designs, your different programming challenges, so that um, you can make sure that no matter what, you will always have a team that can su succeed and um, you know, excel at any given event. Okay, so these so charts, like I said, are super important and makes your like information easy. Like they're easily digestible. Um, it organizes and compiles everything. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. Okay, so I'm gonna go over that. Um, organizes and compiles all your information, and it minimally demonstrates things such as team, like team growth and financial things. Yeah, and so you want to use certain kind of charts for different kinds of things information. So if you're trying to show percentages, a pie chart would be really good for that. It's an easy and simple way to show um, just, you know, quantities of things and a way that most people understand and it's aesthetically pleasing. But if you're trying to show like different versions or different iterations, something more similar to um, just like a chart with different like seasons and then different columns and categories would be best. So that you, way um, everything is documented in a way that makes sense and judges can understand it easily. So your presentation, like I said, is five minutes, and it's the five minutes of achievements and progress throughout the season. So you have to like put in a lot of stuff in these five minutes, but the most important stuff that's unique to your team should be put in there. And then when you're talking about your team, try to like speak clearly, let everyone participate, and help finish somebody's answer if they're struggling. Don't just start talking while they're talking. Let them finish out and be like, to add on to that, I would also say blah, blah, blah. The judging is gonna be 10 minutes of questioning about your season and try to have everybody talk, even if they didn't work in that part of the robot, so that the judges know that everybody was included throughout the season. To practice these questions, you could like all sit around in a circle and then put sample questions and everybody draws them. And then whatever questions is, whether you work on that or not, you could answer it so that you're prepared and the judges know that. So the judges will also come to your pit so you want to have this fair portfolio if you need to reference something to it, and same with the engineering notebook. You always have, you should always have somebody at your pit at all times because if a judge sees that nobody's there, they might just skip your table and might not even come back to you. And then have items to represent what you did throughout the season, like previous iterations or outreach posters and fundraisers. Judges, like I said, really like to see how you get like gained more knowledge. So. Mechanical iterations are very important. And like if you did a major outreach event, you could have like flyers or something to hand to them so that they can see how you did it and how big it was. 
Yeah, I'd like to reiterate just how important pit judging is. The judges coming up to your table determines what kind of awards you're going to win later on. So if you, you know, get judges asking about mechanical questions, that means if you have demonstrations, like Deanna said, that you can show the judges, that will really show that you're prepared, that you innovate, and that you change throughout the season. This could, you know, make major changes between whether or not you're going to win an award or whether you won't. So if you're always there and always paying attention, it could, you know, mean that you might win inspires or you might not. You have to try your hardest to um, present and give the questions uh, as much, um, you know, focus and answers the best. Yes, sure. Uh, two things. Number one, uh, where did the Z logo come from? Number two, do you have any other members on your team? So we don't have any other members on our team. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, what makes Zenith unique and what can make you stand out from other teams at competition? So, um, one thing that a lot of teams do is they have their own, like, gimmicks and stuff to, like, make them memorable to their business and things like that. What makes you memorable? That's what I'm saying. What, what's going to make stand, what's going to stand out to make you memorable? So, we're probably going to do, like, costumes and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, hey, they'll make, they'll be something to talk about, won't it? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. We also, like, highlight, like, unique so obviously you don't know our robot design yet, because this is, it hasn't officially started, but once that happens, you want to highlight like all the unique parts of your robot and all the unique like outreach events. So that's also super cool. Yeah, I'd also like to say this is our first year, you know, as a new team. Um, we've all done first before. This is the first year this team's you know happened, so we're still working on everything. And we're trying to like fully, you know, flush everything out and make sure that we have everything solid. Yeah. Are you guys holding people accountable for working on it? But we help out with day programs with different kids. So we'll teach them things about STEAM, about programming, about robotics. And even some of them do FLL. So during you know the season, once FLL starts and once our season starts, we're going to be helping out kids and teach them more about FLL so that they can you know keep competing. We're not going to be doing stuff for them, but we're going to be giving them aid and helping them where they need it. Yeah. This hurts professionalism. <laughs> <laughs> So you said this is going to be like your first year, correct? Yeah. Okay. So the word zenith, in the, like the, the actual meaning of zenith, is the time at which something is most powerful or successful. And with the starting group, and that that's a good concept, I believe, because you will only reach higher. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 